Hi everyone, I'm Cornelius of Voice Studio East, and this is the second installment of the Singing Demystified video series. Today's topic is breath support, widely regarded as one of the most fundamental aspects of singing technique, but one that is so shrouded in mystery and vague statements that it is nearly impossible to grasp for anyone not already an expert. That is what I hope to change with this video. To begin with, it is important to understand that support is mostly determined by the closure of the vocal folds. This is because the lungs are effectively a valve container that can only hold as much pressure as a valve, that is, the vocal folds, will contain. If you use too much pressure, you will simply be overblowing the vocal folds until the glottis is blown open and the vibration ceases. Conversely, if you use too little pressure, then the vocal folds are never set in motion in the first place. What this means is that the vocal fold closure and breath support always work in unison. Whenever we increase the vocal fold closure, we have to increase the pressure as well. It is impossible for one to deviate very far from the other without the vocal folds simply ceasing to vibrate. The next thing to understand is that while breath support consists of both airflow and pressure, it is impossible to control these independently using the respiratory muscles alone. The ratio of pressure to airflow is set by the vocal fold closure, rather, and intensifying the breath support simply increases both. For technical-minded viewers, we may say that breath support is effectively scalar. So breath support is something we can increase or decrease and which is tightly constrained by vocal fold closure. It is not a magic bullet that can solve complex technique problems, nor can a given vocal coordination be difficult simply on account of requiring particularly advanced breath support. While there are many different ways of doing breath support, some more advanced than others, it is not the case that certain vocal techniques require some really specific approach to breath support. It is rather that there are many different ways of achieving the same level of air pressure. If all this is true, you might be wondering, then doesn't it seem pretty useless to study breath support? Perhaps it doesn't even deserve its status as one of the most fundamental aspects of singing technique. This is not quite the case, as we shall see, but to make sense of it, we have to approach it from a different angle. Breath support is, as the term suggests, all about breathing. Inhaling is typically explained in terms of the diaphragm moving downwards, but it could be more exactly described in terms of expanding the chest cavity, whether downwards via the diaphragm or laterally, via the intercostal muscles. This view is helpful because it stresses the relation of breathing to posture and thus of breath support to posture. Posture is often thought of in terms of some postures being good and others being bad. For example, if one singer has a relaxed, somewhat slouched posture and another singer has a dramatically upright posture like that of a dancer, Many people would say that the former has a bad habit of slouching and perhaps that the latter is overly tense and needs to relax. But this view overlooks the fact that the two singers are in all likelihood singing completely different genres that call for different postures. This point bears emphasizing. Just as it would be difficult to sing a sweet lullaby while headbanging like a metal singer, it would also be difficult to sing a relaxed pop song while maintaining a very proper and upright posture. Therefore, my recommendation is this. Use dramatic breathing when singing a dramatic song like a power ballad or a Puccini aria. Use relaxed breathing when singing a relaxed song and use a chipper bouncy approach to breathing when singing an upbeat pop song. In other words, Use common sense and match your breathing to the vibe of the song. This understanding of breathing does not leave much room for dogma insisting on the supremacy of some one particular approach, but 
there are still some general principles that apply regardless of the specific approach used. Firstly, since a respiratory cycle consists of postural movements, the size of these movements determine both the amount of breath drawn in and the intensity of the breath support. This means we need to match the intensity of our movement to the intensity of the singing, which for most singers will mean getting less timid and singing with the whole body, boldly throwing yourself into that big high note or whatever is a specific challenge at hand. When we feel conflicted, we hesitate. And that hesitation manifests in contradictory movements. If we attempt a dramatic high note but are scared of messing it up, we might tuck the chin and withdraw into a guarded posture and thus throw off the note. To have a clean onset, it is necessary for the singer to be of one mind. I have often thought that this is similar to jumps in figure skating, where in order to stick the landing after a jump, the skater must be of one mind with flawless confidence. If he doubts himself, he will not stick the landing. This consideration is not as relevant in cases where a messy onset is acceptable or even desirable, but it serves to illustrate the general principle. Of course, we cannot expect to be singing that perfectly right off the bat. It may be helpful to start with lower keys or practicing the movement at a slower speed or singing the phrase with the lyrics replaced by a single vowel or using some other kind of training wheels. Perhaps it may even be necessary to accept some hesitation and timidity at first, but regardless, the goal should be to eventually get rid of the training wheels and be able to just go for it, as the cliché goes. Support work in this sense can be viewed as a kind of choreography where you are planning what movements to make in your body to facilitate the changing dynamics of the song. You might decide to step forward into a heroic posture for your high note and then slowly drop down to a relaxed posture on the subsequent descending line. This is something you can practice in lower keys first, keeping in mind that higher pitches will generally require the movement to be larger with more conviction. The second key point I wish to impart is about the exertion of core muscles. Breath support is often correctly associated with the core musculature, which is to say the abdominal muscles, back muscles, and so on. The important thing to understand is that these are expiratory muscles. Their function is to push the diaphragm upwards into the lungs by squeezing the abdomen. When we need a lot of effort in the core muscles, it is either because we are running out of air or because we are using a coordination that requires a lot of pressure. That is to say, the idea that these muscles function to resist the exhalation is a total myth. The air is held back by the vocal folds, not by the support muscles. When the vocal folds are more tightly closed, they are capable of resisting more air, and we need more activation of the support muscles in order to overcome that resistance. It is not, however, the support muscles that are providing the resistance. In summary, first, breath support is not a magic bullet, nor is it the defining feature of any particular coordination. Secondly, when practicing breath support, make sure your movements match the vibe of the given song and that the intensity of your movements follow the dynamics of the song. Finally, support muscles do not function to hold back the air. It is the vocal folds that hold back the air and the support muscles that overcome that resistance. And with that, we've reached the end of today's topic. Remember to like and subscribe for more content. And if you have further questions, feel free to drop a comment below or see the link in the description for a blog post on this topic. Thanks for watching.